So I read the same number of books in February and March that I did in the month of January. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> Welcome or welcome back. My name is Claire. I hope you're doing well and today we're going to talk about all the books that I read in February and March and also my April TBR. The first book that I read in March was Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So this is about a girl named Chloe who has a chronic illness and she tends to avoid going out into the world because it's easier and safer for her to just stay at home. But then one day when she's on a walk she almost gets hit by a car <laughs> and she decides that she needs to get a life. So she makes a get a life list and puts a bunch of different things she wants to accomplish on it. The first one being move out of her parents' house. So she moves into this apartment building where there's this guy named Redford who works in the building and they cannot stand each other. Or in other words, they secretly burn for each other. And Chloe enlists Red to help her complete her get a life list because he's like this cool guy with tattoos and a motorcycle. And I'm sure you can guess where things go from there. So this book was really cute. I borrowed it from the library so I don't have it with me, but I ended up giving this book three stars. I thought it, the chemistry was good, but I kind of instantly forgot about it once I finished reading it. <laughs> I do want to read the rest of the books in the series because I think there is one with both her sisters for Danny and Eve Brown, but I did really enjoy this book and it was really cute. And it's a good, easy romance read with a little bit of spice in it. The rest of the books that I read in February, because I only read four books in February, are ones that I read in my reading viral TikTok books video, which I'll link up here or up here somewhere. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk too much about them because I go in depth about them in that video. I don't want to bore you guys. But I read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I gave four stars. I loved it. It took me a little bit to get into, hence the four star rating, but it's a really, really well done adult fantasy. And then I read Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, which if you watch the video, I was not a huge fan of. I listened to the audiobook and I think that could have affected the way I felt about it a little bit, but I honestly just wasn't really invested in the characters or the story. So I gave that two and a half stars. And then the last book I read in February was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, which I gave four and a half stars. I love this book. It made me feel all the things. I think it's so beautifully written. And if you haven't read it, I highly, highly recommend picking it up. Moving on to March. The first book I read in March was Hellbent, which is the only one I have a physical copy of. I don't know, it's kind of reflective. And this is the second book to Ninth House, and I love Ninth House, like I said, so I really wanted to read this as soon as possible. I loved it. I gave this book five stars. I read it in like a week, but it was a really busy week. It picks up right where Ninth House left off, so we get right into the plot. I love the characters, and I love how much more information and like what's the word? Insight? <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. We get into the characters in this book and the whole thing is really action-packed, really, really fast paced. I <laughs> ended up staying up way too late to read this book multiple nights in a row and I read the entire second half of it in one night <laughs> because things just kept happening and I cannot wait for the next one even though this literally just came out and it's gonna be a hot minute. It was so good. I loved it. Anything by Lee Bardugo, I will read. So a really good way to start March. However, it kind of put me in a major reading slump because the book was so good. Like, you know when you read a book and you just love the characters and you love the world and you just want to read more of it, but there's no more you can read, so then you just don't want to read anything else? <laughs> that was where I was at. So I, like, I started reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I couldn't get into it. I tried to read so many different books and it was nothing against those books. Like, I'm sure they're great. I would love to go back to a lot of them in the future, but I just like couldn't get myself into a book and it really sucked. <laughs> like, reading slumps are not fun. So the next book that I read was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I wanted to read that so that I could watch the show on Prime that came out this month and I listened to the audiobook of that, which I think helped a little bit with the slump because I could listen to it while I was working and it's like less time commitment I guess because I can listen to it while I'm doing other things and the audiobook was incredible it had a full cast so it made it a lot more immersive for me which was nice because the when I le read lessons in chemistry it's just one narrator and they did a good job but I find it harder to get into the story that way I gave this book four stars I really liked it it was a really good story Taylor Jenkins Reid is an incredible storyteller because I was still kind of in my reading slump I wasn't like super invested in it. Like the end did make me emotional. It made me feel things, which was great. But I don't know. I didn't feel a whole lot <laughs> throughout the book. But I gave it four stars because it is a really good book. I just was not like feeling any 
book at that point. I also, at this point, decided to start The Perfect Marriage because I figured it would be like a fun little thriller that I could probably speed through and would help kind of get me out of that reading slump. And boy was I wrong because I, this is the first book in my life that I have ever DNF'd. I could not read this book. I think I got like 30% into the book and I just, I couldn't stand it. The characters I hated the writing, I hated the storyline, unhinged, negative. So <laughs> I kind of skimmed the rest of the book because I wanted to know what happened, but I just like, I don't know. It could be a personal preference thing, but I thought the writing was really, really bad. I just, I could not get into it. There was multiple lines that just pulled me right out of it because they're supposed to be like dramatic and I, I they made me laugh. Like here, I'm gonna pull up a quote. I highlighted some of them so that you guys can see what I mean. Okay, I highlighted, I have three quotes that I highlighted while I was still actually reading it. First, I stare him down. Although he is large, he is so small to me. And that, like, it just, it's supposed to be dramatic, but it just made me laugh. It just kind of felt like someone dumped a thesaurus into this book. <laughs> and then the last line, like, okay, the last quote I have highlighted, this one is like kind of when I decided to stop reading. I'm not a small man, and I didn't stand a chance against his gorilla fists. Imagine what Kelly had to go through. Just imagine. Poor Kelly. Do you see what I mean? I could not take it seriously. The twists are insane to the point that you will never, ever, ever probably guess them. If if you liked it, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I'm never gonna pick up a book by Geneva Rose again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then the, I kind of, after that, I went honestly like a week or two without really reading. Like The Perfect Marriage did nothing to help with the reading slump I was in. And then I was like, okay, I need a fun, quick, easy read, you know? Something lighthearted, something I can just fly through without like having to use my brain. So I read Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. And oh my God, this book completely pulled me out of my reading slump. I gave this book four stars. It's a high school romance between Liz and Wes, her like annoying neighbor who they grew up together and he grew up pranking her and picking on her and this guy that they also grew up with comes back to their high school after years of being in a different school and Liz decides she wants her romance movie ending second chance with this guy so she enlists Wes's help to get this guy to like her and ask her to prom and her and Wes do like kind of a fake dating thing the chemistry is just so so good it was so cute this is a really great book if you like more YA no spice type romances it was funny. I read this book in two days. It's just like, it triggers such nostalgia for like having a crush on someone when you're like 16, like the butterflies in your stomach. It was just so, so cute. The last book that I read in March, which we're cutting it close because I finished it on March 31st at 11.30 p.m. And that was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I've been wanting to pick this book up for a while and it was available as an ebook at my library for a seven day loan. So I decided on a whim that I was gonna read it because I figured a thriller could also kind of help keep me on that fast reading streak. This book is about an actress named Casey whose husband died and then she kind of spiraled and her mom sent her off to their family lake house to be out of the public eye for a while. And she's there by herself, she's super bored, so she starts spying on her neighbors across the lake who are also like rich, famous, wife's a supermodel, husband owns this like huge tech company and she's watching them through binoculars into their giant glass house and she sees some strange stuff go down and it kind of of spirals from there. This book sounded super interesting. I got like 50% in and it was really good. It definitely had me hooked. But I was like, I'm pretty positive I know what the twist is gonna be. Like I was kind of disappointed. I thought I'd figured it out. And no, no, this book is insane. Like completely, it goes off the rails at like 70, 80% in a good way. Cause books can do that where you're like, it feels like it's out of left field and it kind of feels like that, but it was really well written and it was scary. Like. I, when I tell you I finished this at 11.30 p.m., I was not going to sleep after reading this book. I could not. So it did have this kind of like thriller trope that I don't love, but I think in this book it was done fairly well. 
for what it was. So I gave this book three and a half stars and I really do need to pick up more books by Riley Sager because I started two of his books and did not finish them. Again, nothing against him. I was in my reading slump era. Those are all the books that I read in February and March. And now in April, the goal is to read a little bit more than that. Well, not more than I read in two months, more than I read in each month because otherwise I'm gonna fall behind my Goodreads <laughs> reading goal. So the first book that I wanna read is She Gets the Girl. This is a book I have on my Kindle that I've had for months <laughs> and it's a cute sapphic romance that I think will be a really easy read. So that's probably gonna be my first book of April. And then I wanna read The Stolen Heir by Holly Black, which is the kind of sequel to The Cruel Prince that follows Jude's younger brother 10 years in the future when he's set to be the king of Alfheim and it's kind of like an enemies to lovers fantasy politics type book. And I love The Cruel Prince series, so I'm excited to read that. The next books that I wanna read are the Inheritance Games series, which I have the first two books here. I need to get the third one. I'm definitely gonna do a reading vlog for these, so look out for that, but that'll probably be in late April. I think this will be a series that I'll read pretty fast. It sounds super interesting. It's about a girl named Avery who in high school is suddenly left a billionaire's fortune when he dies and she didn't know him. She has no idea why. And she has to move into his mansion with all his grandsons and solve some mysteries, some puzzles. And I think this is a series that I'm really gonna get into. So I'm really excited to read it. And I wanna read all three of those books in April. At the end of April, the new Emily Henry book is coming out and I am so excited. Emily Henry is like by far my favorite romance author. I feel like she deserves all the hype she gets. She writes such good chemistry, such good banter between her characters. And she has Happy Place coming out, I believe on April 25th. I'm definitely gonna pre-order that so that I get it the day of. I read Book Lovers as soon as it came out last year. I loved it. Book Lovers is like probably my all-time favorite romance. So that's one that I'm very, very excited for. And those are all the books that I wanna read in April. I don't know if I will get through all of them. I'm hoping I can. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite book that you've read in the last few months have been or one that you're really looking forward to reading. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.